Hey guys, it is Scott the Steamroller Steam with winnersandwiners.com. It's the last day of the year, the NFL. Let's talk about it, shall we? But before we get going, a little housekeeping. If you guys would be so kind, take a minute, smash that like button, just give us the thumbs up. Just takes a second, means a lot to me and means a lot to uh, our mission, what we're trying to do here. So uh, yeah, do that for us. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. And of course, Drop me a comment. Let me know what your best plays are for today. You've got the NFL rocking. I know you've got some winners cooked up. Share them with the class. Let's find out what they are. All right. So uh, as we record this, it's Saturday afternoon. Um, I've got some plans going uh, going to uh, my mother-in-law's apartment or uh, retirement home for a late Christmas get together with all the extended family. So yeah, that should be fun. Uh, so, but what that means to you is I'm doing everything early and uh, getting everything recorded before I go. So it's early afternoon on Saturday. We don't know the results of the Cowboys game yet, uh, as we do have the over 29 and a half team total there. We'll see how that goes. In the meantime, let's talk about going the different direction in this one, shall we? We're going to take a look at the Chargers and the Broncos, a battle there in the AFC West. Man, you know what? Here's the deal. Chiefs have had a good team. They've had a really good team for like the last uh, you know four or five years with Mahomes. They had a decent team before that, but they have had such a gift that the AFC West has just been an absolute dumpster fire on top of a train wreck, uh, on uh, running through a clusterfuck. All right, just it's it's really again to quote my son, winning the West like being the smartest horse. So, having said that, let's take a look at the Chargers and the Broncos. I'm looking at this total of 36 and a half, and you know what I think? I think that total is way too high. Uh, hey, good news in Denver. The Jared Stidham era begins today. <laughs> Man, speaking of clusterfucks, holy mackerel. They have got some major problems there in Denver. I don't know what you do with Russell Wilson. I know he's like, I think he hit somewhere in the neighborhood of $70 million on the cap in the next two years. I think 80 of it's guaranteed. I don't know. It's a lot. And it's a nightmare. And I'm here for all of it. Uh, so anyway, it's Jared Stidham. Uh, Jared Stidham has been in the league four years. He has uh, gone uh, 31 of uh, 77. Uh, for, uh, excuse, me, excuse me. He's gone 31 of 77. Yeah, he's gone uh, 77 of uh, 108. Uh, 58.8%, 6 TDs, 7 interceptions, made two starts at the end of the 2022 season for Las Vegas, um, went 45 of 70, 4 TDs, and 3 interceptions. I finally figured out my writing on the uh, sentence above, by the way. Stidham lifetime, 77 of 131. I forgot to put the 1 in there, so apologies for confusing you. I confused myself. Um, no, and the, on the other side of the ball, You've got, uh, you've got Easton Stick, the pride of North Dakota State by way of Omaha, Nebraska, uh, starting for the Chargers. Man, what a great, uh, what a great gig that is. He's, the, uh, he's stepping up for Justin Herbert, uh, who needed surgery on his finger. I'm assuming the finger was injured by repeatedly, repeatedly flipping off Brandon Staley for yet another ridiculous, inexplicable call. Um, but the most important, the number for Stick that you have to remember is $5 million and $63,000. Why is that important? Because that's how much he's made in the NFL since he was drafted in 2019. Um, he's appeared one time before the, these last two starts. He appeared in one game in 2020, and that was it. It's literally a position in the NFL that I can confidently say I could have played over the last two seasons. But uh, he's made two starts this season. He's been okay. Um, but of course, a lot of that was kind of wind dated because, uh, in the first game he had a, uh, I think he had to have one fumble or two fumbles that, uh, to the Raiders that just, uh, turned him over there three times in the first quarter and Raiders basically played prevent defense for three quarters. So he had a pretty soft setup, uh, to go against there in Vegas as the Chargers ended up losing that one, 63 to 21. Um, the bigger problem for both of these quarterbacks, other than a lack of, you know, top tier talent for themselves is a lack of talent around them. Uh, they have got some serious injuries on the Charger side. They're going to be missing their top three receivers. Uh, Keenan Allen's out. 
uh, Palmer's out and Mike Williams is out as well. Um, to add to the fun, you say, well, you know what? You just give the ball to Eckler, let him do his thing. Eckler has also been a disaster this season. I know personally because he's been on my fantasy team, uh, averaging just 3.7 yards per carry. And just when we've needed him most, he has been absolutely dreadful over the last five weeks, averaging just 3.2 yards per carry and one rushing TD over that stretch. Um, he still catches the ball. He's still good for uh, three to four receptions a game, but he has just one receiving touchdown on the season. So not much of a threat to score um, by way of the air. And the Broncos, well, uh, they're for Jared Stidham. They're in not much better shape than the Chargers are. Uh, Cortland Sutton is out. Uh, Patrick went on IR with, I think, an Achilles problem this week. And uh, Jerry Judy is sick. He sat on practice on Friday. And uh, Marvin Mims is nursing a bad hammy. Both of those last two guys are listed as questionable. First two guys are out. Um, so it's going to be the uh, Brandon Johnson and Lil Jordan Humphrey show, quite possibly. Uh, frankly, I don't even know if a full-size Jordan Humphrey could help this Broncos team right now. That is a team in disarray. I think the coaches lost the locker room. Um, Russell Wilson came out this week and had some controversial things about how he was treated. I, I just, I just, I just don't know where the points are going to come from for either one of these squads. Now, I know what you're saying. Both of these defenses are terrible, and that's absolutely true. However, it is kind of weakness against weakness. Uh, both of the defenses struggle to stop the run. Neither one of the offenses can really run the football. And in fact, the Denver defense is dead last when it comes to stopping the run yards per uh, attempt is the one I usually look at. Um, but the Chargers, well, they have just one 100-yard rushing game since the 22nd of October. This game is not going to be fun to watch, but it will be fun to cash the tickets. I've got the, uh, the Chargers and the Broncos under 36 and a half. And at the end of that one, you guys can join me as we – pick up our winning tickets, and head back to the window. All right, you guys have a great day. Have a great new year, everybody. I will be back with a, a little play from Monday. Uh, I can tell you Monday, is the, is the, I've got a game that I've been looking at this whole time that I think it's, a, it's one of the college bowl games, and I'm locked in. It's kind of a square play, not going to lie, but I think it's going to be a monster. All right, so until then, let's go get some NFL wins. All right. Go Chiefs. Let's uh, lock up the division or whatever. Uh, you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Blah, blah, blah. We'll see you next time.